Hello, this is Chris from Synced Stories, and today we're going to do a little experiment. And we're going to um, try to locate uh, a couple of interesting features in Tintin's um, style of using um, speech balloons. So, and this is um, what I'm going to do in this video here is to replicate. I'm going to draw a little bit here live. Um, I'm going to draw Tintin in um, one of his panels. And I'm going to show approximately what he's doing um, in terms of um, panel um, design, you could say. Or, well, it's not the panel itself, it's not the panel frame itself, but it's the balloon. It's the design of the balloons within the panel. So this is the project for today and this is why we have a blank space so far here but before i go on i shall as usual i shall just take a quick detour here and talk about this upcoming comic book and it's uh, the 987 degrees centigrade a fast-paced action adventure uh, in science fiction style and it's the um, first comic book out of eight in uh, season one of the uh, umbrella name Unlimited Danger. So Unlimited Danger season one and the first book is 987 degrees centigrade and um, it looks like this. Let's see, we have a PNG now, and which has a has a back cover here also, and we have the list of the other seven volumes in the series, which are uh, coming up in the coming years when I'm uh, gradually completing these. So this is season one, Unlimited Danger, and it's fantastic action adventure with lots of drama, lots of intrigue, lots of problems, lots of solutions, and lots of energy, power, and excitement. So that's all for you to look after in uh, on Twitter and on YouTube and and then ultimately um, at the sh shop, the online shop where the printed edition is going to be produced or for sale. So that's the um, that's the end result. All right, so today then, uh, returning to today's video, we will try to explain uh, by drawing um, what um, Her Herge Hergé uh, was doing in, in um, Tintin's adventures, because he had some kind of philosophy in terms of how he designed the balloons. Now, the best thing here, before I start, the best thing, of course, would be if I just could take a couple of panels here and just copy them from Tintin's book and then just pasting them here and showing them. But I don't have the copyright of doing that because I'm not the author of those comic books so I can't do that but what I can do is I can explain to you by re 
doing it myself uh, in a sketchy, very sketchy style, and um, and in that way I will be able to explain exactly what the issue is or what the problems are or what the possibilities may be um, uh, for this topic matter which is the balloon design. Alright so let's take, uh, so the first thing I want you to know is that we're talking about, well maybe we can just uh, we can just write it here, so Castafioras Wait, well, it's a wrong Maybe we should have black text here, it wouldn't be so bad I don't know what the exact English name of of this is, but the English translation of uh, Le bijou de la Castafiore would be probably something like this the jewels of Castafiore. So, the so that that's what I'm looking in right now at my desk here, and I'm looking at page 36, and I'm looking at panel D David 1 so that's right so all right so that's so for those who those of you who already have the jewels of Castafiore that comic book volume uh, you can go to page 36 and panel D1 and there you can see uh, you can follow my um, proceeding here <laughs> all right so this was oh, okay so let's uh, see if we can find our tools that would be nice there they are. Okay, tools are always nice. And let's start with drawing a quick panel here. And this is the approximate size here. Or this, uh, not the approximate size, but the approximate relative size of between the height and the width. So now they have a... Uh, we don't want that. Well, let's see if we can transform this. Let's just do a... perhaps we can just do a... Just a quick. I'll just do a quick fix like this here. So we and alt select. Okay, we have to have one pixel more there. Okay. And we suggest a shape, of course, so we'll just double click there. Like that. Okay. So now we have something to. And I actually will. We'll just make this a ordinary layer, which is not. so we can draw on it immediately here so. all right so now the frame we perhaps should just quickly we can to get some stroke here perhaps 
little thicker. And well, I think this was a bad idea actually to start like this. Well, let's just not do it with these, just making a brush instead. I think that's we'll just use a brush here and let's remove, let's just make everything white instead. That will be much more. We'll just type in a lot of F's here, like that, and then we'll just fill it up and we restart here. And we press D to restore the uh, black and the white, and we have the brush on, and we are increasing our brush size. That's a little too much. Maybe we can have six. Holding shift down, yes, let's draw it up here without something like that. Oops, whoops. Okay, so we just this is the approximate maybe it's actually a little it's it's a little more oh whoops um it's a little more um just wanted to have the approximate little like that i think it's better so we'll just merge that together and we'll just zoom in a little bit we can just fix those corners there. So something like that. Okay, and then the hand and the pencil here, like that. So now we have a frame, and now let's start laying out the um, the figure here. Okay, so so we are looking at Tintin walking. So Tintin is walking here and he is uh, having his head something like that. I'm using the brush here now. He's having his head a little less there and as he is, he's leaning a little, he's leaning a little forward. And he is putting one leg f ahead here and something like that and then he's having another leg almost straight down there he has his strange pants there his old style 30s pants <laughs> all right so Okay, so he's and he's having his hand, uh, his arms, on his back there, and his head is of course a little smaller. Com comparatively speaking, something like that, of course, and then the head should, should probably be a little more there. Okay, so we'll just 
I'm going to raise a little bit here, sorry. All right, so something like that. So he's walking and he's in the middle of the, um, he's on the castle, Moulin Zar, or whatever it's called. The Moulin Castle or something, some name like that. So he's walking in some corridor or something. So there's a and then there is a pattern on the wall and and there's some perspective here to take care of. Something like that. And then there is the dog Milou. I think, well, in, in French it's Milou, but I'm not sure in English. It was, it was something else, I think it's some, um, it's called something else in snow, snowy, I think it is in English, isn't it? Well, you can, you can leave a comment in the, if you, if you know the real name in English. Uh, anyway, so he has these legs here or something like that. So, and it seems like he's talking. The dog is talking to Milou or, or to to Tintin. He's saying something. All right. So, so now they should be saying something. And now, so now we're going to. We now we're going to. Um, show what the balloons really look like but I wanted to um, wanted to draw these things so we get the context and we get get some kind of feeling for for even if you don't have the 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 album yourself then you can at least follow along a little bit better so okay so now we're going to do one thing more and that is we're going to um, race we're going to race Tintin a little bit from so that he's is positioned higher in the um, in the panel so he's I want him to well let's just clip here a little bit higher so because the, it this is important because of of the balloons so I'm just copying and pasting and the V on the two on the um, keyboard to get the move tool and then I'm moving the second layer here as you see up and then I'm just merging them both together quickly hiding those under there and now I can just erase the small thing here to, just to get the we're just doing this quick and dirty here just to get a some um, feeling for the composition the original composition of the the panel okay so now we are going to insert the balloons as Arge uh, originally did it or her her gay in english in plan anglais <laughs> or whatever all right so now so his style then, at least for these balloons, is something like that. So maybe I should, I can actually go up in scale here now. So let's go up in scale there. And I want to be, um, I'm looking here at the actual panel in the in the printed book and I'm okay so so it's interesting to see there is approximately approximately it looks like this
something like okay I have the black 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 approximately like this yes okay and then he's doing some kind of beautification here now he's actually going here okay so okay so okay and then he goes down okay he goes down let me increase this size here okay so he goes down and i want the black paint and i'm holding shift down and i'm doing so we can illustrate what he's doing okay and then he's doing this little corner here again and then he is going all the way tight there's no space what i can see here i have to check it once more no, there, there seems to be no space there is not one pixel or one there's not, not any room here in between the balloon um the balloon line the balloon outline and the contour of Tintin's face so if we have if we have Tintin's face with his Tintin's hair here or something Tintin's hair comes here But what I'm what I'm saying is that here in this intersection, the, the this balloon line goes instead instead of doing like this, he goes he he doesn't do that, so he doesn't no space in between there. It goes straight. So then. And then, of course, it continues here on the other side until something like this. And then he makes the same like rectangular beautification <laughs> or what was you sort of. And then he goes up here and then he goes, does something like that again here. So this is approximately what he's doing. Let me X X on the keyboard is switching from black to white and this is very useful when you're drawing. Instead of erasing, this is how I use it at least, I'm just Xing my way. A little, I paint a little black and then I paint a little white and then I paint a little black and then <laughs> so that's that's my style of Photoshop painting. Uh, all right, so so now we have one balloon there, um, but it's not complete. So let's do that again, C continuing here. And this is interesting here because what he's doing in the, so w one would expect or I would expect or uh, I mean one would expect the panel um, to have a or the balloon sorry the balloon uh, or the dialogue speech dialogue um, to have its tail or, or the pointer here or something something that's what I would expect 
as it is in many other cases. But, but here, he has put it over here to the right instead. So I'm drawing this now with the brush and he is pointing, it's actually, the dimensions are not exact, of course, but, but the idea is, but it's something, it's the, in the, in the original here, the, the pointer is pointing at, at, um, the upper arm or the shoulder here. That's what he's doing. Okay, so now what, why this strange arrangement? I mean, he's not even pointing it to the mouth. I mean, is the shoulder talking or, or so? No. I think the reason for this um, peculiar arrangement is simply that he has another um, uh, speech bubble or speech balloon to um, handle in this panel so he's using so the dog snowy or milou in fr French um, also speaks and now, so 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 the actual design here is that there is starting there. There's a little space here, and the space is approximately half his head or something like that, and it's, it ends at um, at the level of his mouth. So Tintin's mouse approximately. Okay, so we have to have black and no selection. Oh, okay, I'm using selection. Okay, um, so I'm holding shift down and I want black at oh shoot. So okay, so now this is Snowy's. and this goes more than half way over the panel. It goes almost over there. Okay, and then we have this arrangement again. And then it goes down above Snowy's face. So unlike Tintin's face, Snowy's face is not covered uh, with the balloon line. Or the balloon is not interfering with Got these designs. Okay, let's redo that instead. Okay, something like that. And then let's do it like there. And on the other side here as well. So, okay, good. Then take that in a little bit. Right, and we have these corners or beautification. That, and then we have the tail here. And at least we have some symmetry here. So in this case, M M Snowy or Milou here is his. Uh, his tail, or <laughs> his, it's not his tail, we have a tail also, the, the dog's tail goes here, down here. <laughs> uh, 
but not that tail. So snow is balloon tail goes here, but snow is real tail goes here. So it's two tails um, beside each other here. So that's very peculiar. Um, and both are white. <laughs> All right. So actually, but actually, what it looks like if I close in here now, he has one one ear is sticking inside the balloon, while the other isn't reaching it like that. So. All right. So now we have something uh, here to talk about. Um, and perhaps we can also, we can just, while we are at it, we can just try to make this perhaps a little nicer. But this is this is what what it looks like. This is sort of the style of balloon tail that Hergé is using. And this, and this, of course, should be nicer. But it looks like it's just a like a corner sticking in there. And the idea, design-wise, I think, is simply to avoid a straight uh, corner. So instead of so instead of having uh, a corner like this, just a simple like like on the, in the panel like a like a panel corner to avoid having a panel corner style he's doing this small thing to to make it rounder or more palatable that's that's i that's what i think but uh the real reason we may never know but but um that's at least that's how I see it. Now, so what I want to talk about here now is that my I, I was looking very I, ha, I had a hard long look at these uh, comic books because Tintin is one of my favorites, so I before I started to design UD11, the Unlimited Danger series of comic books, I wanted to adapt the best style possible. So I went through a lot of comic books, and and out of all comic books I have on my shelves. Um, Tintin's um, book is, I think, the most elaborate production uh, ever made in terms of like complete control over every aspect of, of uh, the production. So in terms of line uh, width, in terms of um, uh, coloring in terms of panel design in terms of um, camera position in terms of this and that so so if you want to discuss any any uh, aspect of comic book design and production I think Dintin is the best approximation ever realized or ever attempted or something like that so so that's why i took a was very serious um when i when i sort of wanted to make something of my own that i wanted to take the best of the best but i found that tintin uh the style didn't really suit me, and I'm going to explain here why. 
So although I love these fantastic drawings and these fantastic coloring and the the plots and the uh, I mean all the all the I mean the com it it's just so fantastic made I mean it's just uh, incredible so but but still it could be made better I think in terms of um, the panel uh, or the, not the not the panels themselves in terms of the drawings but in terms of the design of the uh, balloons so i'm going to talk about a few aspects here which i have changed myself uh, to my in, in my own comic book of course but i got some ideas from here and I'm trying to refine them and to make them uh, better so one aspect of course maybe I should do that here also while I'm so I'm just going to quickly going to quickly just mark out that here are five lines of text and here are also five lines of, of text i'm just like so so okay so so one one thing here of course uh, with t Tintin's um, balloons is that in general there is much too much text so that's one problem that and of course you can get away with that he, because his drawings are so fantastic that uh, we basically don't <laughs> We don't care what the what the text says, uh, because his his drawings are so expression. Uh, so so we 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 just um, uh, can forgive him for for anything like that. So so and that's the power of if you are a very 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 good artist, you can get away with a. A bad story and you can get away with too much text then you can get away with different things uh, like that so but for a person who is not as good uh, as as uh, RJ or or some someone else who is or Asterix or, or Uderzo uh, who draws Asterix or, or someone who's not really on that level he has he has to I think be more careful about all the other aspects of, of the comic book uh, design so f but for a person who is who is like uh, the world's best comic book artist um, he can <laughs> he can do of course however he wants and still be um, very much appreciated anyway so but now let's let's talk some more about, about exactly these balloons here now so one thing of course that Tintin does as I said too much text I think that's one uh, Thing that you really you really have to think about because too much text means you have to spend a lot of time in in the panel to actually read it and while doing that you lose the pace in the in the story um, like in, in totality so so you lose 
you lose the the fluidity you you lose the flow you lose the pace of the um of the the whole thing so i remember when i was a kid i was i was uh all the time i was skipping skipping the text i was just reading perhaps a line or two and then oh, i was too much text and i let's go to the next panel because you, you you want that flow like you have in a movie you want you want the next frame you want the next frame you want the next frame it, it has to be delivered with a minimum of text not five long like that this is much text i mean and still this is a this is a pretty narrow panel i mean there are many many more examples of um twice the amount of text or three times the amount of text so anyway so that's that's one thing that we should learn um so as this um, design is is uh, sort of designed to fit in as much text as is possible. I mean, there's a, there's a small space here to the panel frame itself, to the left and up here and up here, and um, so the straight lines of the left hand side of the balloon and the right hand side of the balloon sort of accommodates that you can sort of push in as much text as possible and um, so that's from you know, so from that functionality kind of view of course it makes sense to have straight um, straight uh, borders or straight uh, sides of the balloon okay so that's one aspect and another aspect as we can see here in this panel is that he has two balloons in the same panel and this is the almost the standard in I'm looking here at page 36 and um, And well, I think the, the the idea is that almost exclusively, if there are two persons in in the panel, or in this case, uh, uh, one person and one dog, then both of them are having dialogues. And if you have three persons. In the panel, I would say that at least there would be two dialogues or two balloons in that panel. So at least two persons are talking out of the three or out of four. So on page 37, we have four uh, Monsieur Dupont and Dupont and Tintin and Haddock. And there are two balloons in that panel. And then we have another panel on page 37 with Dupont and Dupont and Tintin. And there we have three uh, balloons. Okay, so, so that's... Um, but there are, of course, also uh, panels where one person has just... is, is alone. And, uh, and in that case, there are just one balloon each in these panels. So, but, but what I decided to do myself is that regardless of um, the number of persons in the panel visible, I will never have more than one balloon. And that is because I want to streamline the reading um, experience for, for the reader and not 
have a lot of text in the balloon and and because having f several b um, balloons uh, makes it ma makes it necessary to spread the text graphically all over the page so so we don't really know where the text will end up so sometimes uh, it comes from uh, it's so if if um, so the idea is that if we can save if we can save um well saved but we can if we if we decide that we only have one balloon then that balloon could always be here so we have sort of like a reserved space for any balloon that it should be up here in this area on the topmost 25 percent of the panel should always have a pan or should always have a balloon so if, if if there is any talking in the panel of course otherwise it's empty or maybe there's a caption box or but but if but also in the, like in the caption box case the text would be up here right so we we always as a reader we know where to look on the page or in the panel for the text so there are no surprises we have a, it is it's like in film i mean you have subtitles right and the subtitles uh, don't jump around <laughs> in the in the, uh, in the picture they, they they don't appear normally I mean in some cases there there is if you are subtitling something in a foreign language which sort of uh, where there is text already in the in the film perhaps so that the producers have an American version where there's something like um, the in the start of the movie there is some um, Rome in July 2015 or something says on the on, on the on the screen and then the um, the Hindi translator perhaps he he sort of doesn't want to hide that original text on the screen so he he may jump his subtitles up instead on the screen just during those five seconds perhaps or, or but but that's extremely i mean it's rare but but during the film itself during the normal action film the subtitles are always in a particular location and they don't jump around all over the screen to, to the upper left the lower left or upper right or center stage <laughs> like that they always are uh, are positioned at the same uh, screen position whenever they uh, are visible so likewise here i regard this as a as a as a um how should we say it? it's it's um ud11 kind of trait that we should never have a, more than one balloon in each panel and we should minimize our text with um, very deliberate copy editing I mean, we have to copy edit, we have to rewrite it in the most compact format, in the most, not only the most compact format, but, but also the most, um, the most um, natural expression format as we can. So it should be both concise and sound natural um 
in the in that particular situation for that particular character for that uh, particular time and and on and on because the character may of course uh, change his style of talking also depending on whom to whom we, he's talking so he, he may be very casual when just uh, talking to a man on the street but then when he enters into the university hall and talks to the professor he may be able to um, articulate his concerns in a much more nuanced and, and uh, academic styled uh, prose than otherwise. So, so it, it, it's all in the editing. You have, to, you have to make your characters sound as if um, they know what they're doing. So they, that they are consistent and they are appropriate in each situation. All right, but at but the, the point was concise. You still have to be concise, and if you want to talk, if you want you want to present a, a complex argument. I'm not saying that you can't can't uh, present a complex argument with lots of text, but then you have to do it in many panels. You can have five panels, you can have ten panels, you can have fifteen panels, where the where the dis, where the uh, where one person tries to explain something very complicated. So so he talks about this and then talks about that and then the, but then of course if you do this then you have to do that but if you do the, the other thing there you can you can then you can do that and so if 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 he if the story is designed that way then of course you can do it you, but but don't do it in one panel don't try to squeeze in uh, 10 lines of text in in one panel Because you 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 will lose your readers. That's my point. That that's my view, at least. Maybe maybe some are interested, but but I I think the overwhelming uh, majority of of all comic book readers are more geared to to the pictures than to the text. So so that's just that's just my. Okay, so so that's. That's one aspect then. So we have tried to minimize the text so that only one dialogue is needed. And if the dog needs to talk, then he can talk in the next panel. And then you can have a close-up of the dog instead. And that way you can show his expression much better, also in the face. So, so it's more like, so, so you have, it's more like, uh, like a film. So you can, you do close-ups and then you do wide angle, you do master shots and then you do uh, all the other in between also. But you, so you zoom in and you zoom out and you zoom in and you zoom out and then you can and of course you have to change the camera all all the all that but so okay so so the rules i'm describing are the ones that i'm using myself in my book and um and i'll show you some of these things later on but for now i want to start talking about uh, the actual design of the balloons because I, I think we can improve here in many ways. One aspect of this is that uh, is that of um, the corners here. So if we zoom in 
on the corners H for hand and then I can scroll with the with the hand here um, one one problem with this design here is that it's too rectangular everything is too so even if he he has made these beautification corners <laughs> it still it still feels much too rectangular so so from a design point of view i think that okay okay uh, we have a rec fully rectangular panel frame the panel frame is as rectangular it can be therefore we cannot have this much another we, can, we, we cannot have another line going here so m long and so uh, so straight also especially not since the distance here between these lines are so small also that that's also a consideration and in the in in as when i'm looking at the tintin uh, original here it, i estimate this white distance here between the two lines to be approximately one and a half maybe two of these panel frame thickness so it's it's uh, 1.75 maybe or something like that so less than two panel thicknesses here so the, these are close so what, what I'm proposing and what I'm doing myself here is that we have to we have to make this rounder so now I'm going to do that here so we have to have rounded corners here to make this softer to make this nicer that's just a must otherwise it looks too square and cramped this is of course not the only thing we have to do but this is part one of, of the modifications that I'm doing so we have to do that or I have to do that whoops we have a B here yes we have a B so we have to something like this I, I of course have developed a template for this so I don't draw like this when I'm I draw on paper always so using a template so I, I get my but the, I'm, I'm just showing you approximately how it would look like like that of course and the same same for for the other side so this is one modification and i'm keeping i'm keeping um well maybe i can do it on the right side i'll i'll, I'll do it here also i'm lazy but not that lazy <laughs> and after all this is a this is a live video so it's fun to to do things like this and try to not care too much about a million people watching you doing awful <laughs> awful work but I'm just kidding here so no but this is important it's important to get it right to 
and and that goes for everyone who's who's doing you you have to do what you want to do in terms of style so if you don't like my ideas then of course you, you do whatever you like you have to you have to go with your your style preferences so i'm just laying this out and i'm trying to explain why i like it and why i don't like it and, and stuff like that and then you may adapt it or not adapt it that's totally up to you of course all right so this is the basic idea i'm using that i'm having rounded corners instead of these uh, small beautifications done by Hergé and so that's one thing but then another thing uh, it's not that I just um, uh, it's not that I just round the corners instead but I also realized that um, that this distance here between the panel frame and the balloon frame or the balloon outline that this this um, distance is in my taste much too small so in in my uh, so it feels cramped and it feels too tight and it feels um, not good so what I have done is I am I have moved out the whole dialogue or, or the balloon speech speech book speech um, so I'm moving the balloon a little more something like well I can do this in two steps here let's do it like that something like that I'm doing this scale instead or something something like that that this is the I don't have the exact dimensions right here right now but but you I think you can I th I think you can appreciate the fact that uh, the feeling is less cramped so if I just merge these and then we continue on that one and then I do the same on this in this dimension here I'm just bringing it down a few steps well, let's do another one if we can but I think that's just to get the design feeling for this because it's it's this experimentation that is crucial when it comes to getting the right feeling for your production because it's all the details taken together that determines if your comic book is uh, looks good it's not just the drawings themselves but it's all these details okay and then maybe we can just let's just copy this one here so copy and paste this one here flip it and just drag it over here okay then we you get the idea here like that and then we perhaps we can just erase this top layer here 
so it shines through and then oh now I should have oh, of course I should move it also at the same okay then we do like this something like this and then we can just paint over here ah okay let's increase the scale and be more <laughs> less width on the pencil here so I'm using pencil to erase because I don't have to press so hard if I use a brush and erase I use white I have to I I don't erase as quickly so I use pencil always and here is the brush again here so like that and then of course we have to we have to move the uh, to what it was before what okay so maybe I didn't merge them no 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 okay let's take that away and merge these and let's copy now I can just get that also okay and we just something like that well it's just okay so. all right so now we're there Okay, so another aspect now. Um, is that in this drawing, Tintin's head is sticking inside the balloon. Why would you ever do that? I mean, why would you ever do that? The only reason what I can see is that he has so much text that he can't um, that he can't um, that he doesn't have space enough to draw the characters. So this is this is as I see it. This is the reason for why he's doing this. So if he were to take uh, the decision to to have less text in Tintin, if if he cut, if he were to cut the the number of lines from f from five to four, in st for instance, then he could have uh, ended the. Um, the balloon up here if I can he could have ended the balloon um, let's see could have ended the balloon up here instead like that That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it would be to have a balloon that sort of goes like like this. Oh, I can just use shift here so it gets straighter lines, but oops. Oh my goodness. Well, 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 let's just, let's just undo this. 
and let's so I was thinking we can do something like this you could have a balloon that goes like this because text is easier to read also when when the width is smaller so that's why newspapers or printing text in in columns right so so that's the idea behind columns the text doesn't flow from one from the left side of tabloid to the right side of tabloid but they they have five columns so they have six columns or seven columns or whatever they have because it's it's easy to read it in columns so you could have a balloon like that a column design with eight lines or ten lines even if you only had one balloon but now he has two balloons and and you know, with five lines of text in each and, uh, and and as i said before this is this is not not much text compared to all the other uh, panels on the page i mean this is still i mean so 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 the the culprit is is uh, a combination of of things it's it's the idea that he uses many balloons in the same panel and he's using too much text in total so that's um that's my observation here so instead of if we only could have if we, if, we, if we would have only used one balloon, he could easily have fitted all the text up here in that one. Um, but he still, of course, should edit the text more, I think. But... All right, so so that's so. So where does this leave us? Yeah. Oh, right. So let now let's back out. Let's skip that layer there and go back to the discussion here. So now we have we have moved the side of the balloon into the panel itself a few pixels on all sides except the this side but on the left and the top and the right we have move, moved it to get more space here so we do have more space now another thing when in terms of the design is that uh, okay we have made round corners instead instead of these uh, strange beautiful so-called <laughs> beautification so that's so that's another thing which may which makes this form here the t the total impression of the panel and the balloon is now more pleasant it's more it's it's a it's the juxtaposition of of this here this this uh, that you have a, a now you have a round corner for the balloon and you have a straight corner or a, a round shape of the balloon and a straight there so so this sort of um, juxtaposition uh, this this um, making these forms appear uh, like as close as this is now more pleasant i think it's it's a more uh soft and and um soft impression 
compared to the other the other uh, when you use the the more square variant there okay so we have we have changed the roundness of the corners we have changed the distance to the panel frame but now we have to also simplify the balloon tail because this doesn't look very good to me this this kind of um, uh, this kind of tail reminds me of the style which sometimes is used when when you have when you are representing a telephone call you have a telephone they have man holding a telephone line listening to the ear and then you have this tail coming out of the telephone with with the voice of the person who is calling not the person in the uh, depicted in the panel but the other person on the other end of the line and this this tail sort of represents something that is transmitted uh, through through the air or through some machine or something like that so sometimes you see this when um, also when you have a radio for instance and where where the newscast speaker is is uh, sort of talking in a voice and you you hear it like that and but then but then this this sort of tail is is normally accompanied by another like uh, i can I can draw this up here in the in the um, so normally it looks like this that we have can zoom in a little bit okay so we have some some kind of uh, a clone stamp no we don't want a clone okay so normally it, it's something like this you have some like that and then you have some some tail like that and then you have the text here hello hello but this is a, this is a special type of of, of dialogue which sort of uh represent some some kind of transmission or transmitting or some some um, voice of someone who is not in the vicinity of the uh, environment depicted in the panel so this is the uh, difference so so which is which is why I don't like this tail. So I, I I like this tail if it's used in the sort of traditional, like in in this position. The, I like the tail there, but not combined with a regular panel. So because because uh, RJ is always using this uh, kind of uh, not straight tail uh, in all of this, so I, I I I think it looks too too edgy. It looks not soft or simple enough. Yes, it's probably something with simplicity. I object to there so it's so what I want to do instead what I have done in my UD 11 my 987 degrees centigrade is that I'm using uh, 
straight straight uh, so not fancy but simple so this is more the American style of comics the good old Marvel in the uh, at least in the 60s and 70s they were still using these simple and I like them for their simplicity so I'm I have adopted that style and then I'm using um, this style with with the, this kind of arrangement in other panels where, where they actually are depicting someone who is transmitting something over a television set or a radio or something like that when when we don't see the speaker perhaps we just hear his voice like that so all right so now let's look at what else we have right so so what i would do then in this situation here what I actually would do, of course, I wouldn't pay, I wouldn't point the balloon tail to his shoulders if I could avoid it, but I would try to um, do some arrangement that he's 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 talking in this direction. Uh, he's talking uh, let's grab that he's he's talking let's see I, I'm looking now at, at the original he's sort of speaking right like this because he is he has his nose here perhaps I should have done this before but well but he's he's looking that way or something like that and it's a very stern look and um so of course then if he's looking that way that way then the um, the tail should of course be something like this his his and and the thing is that if you have if you have a smaller balloon also then everything becomes easier because then it does then, then the balloon tail doesn't have to go like 10 degrees angle down only I mean, it looks you you, can, you can't really do like that but if you have the balloon higher up compared to his face then you can do the regular 45 degrees or something like that which which looks perfectly okay in my in my world so if we do the panel there instead or the the tail there instead and the balloon up here then like that So it's all about editing. It's all about preparation that has to go, um, that has to be done before you start drawing. And that's a that's a tricky part because it's it may be easy for some to like myself. I I like the preparation. I like the editing, copy editing. I like I like the the whole challenge of the of the of the whole panel i'm not just interested in in drawing i'm i like the coloring i like the the design of the balloons i like the hand lettering of of the text and all that i like that i like the drawing of the panel with with my fountain pen the panel frame and i like i like all the, all the aspects which which probably makes me a little 
um, unusual because um, most people who are into comics they 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 sort of I get the impression at least that they are interested only in the drawings basically and then and then they do the little coloring and that's it and then they sort of as a last step they they toss in some dialogue or like that so so but that's that's uh, not really I wouldn't say it's unprofessional, but I, I'm saying that it's not my style. I mean, if, if you really want a good story, and if you really want, um, you, then, then you have to, uh, you have to, it, it's all about presentation. So if, if it's, if it's too much text, people will, will, um, will not uh, adopt it as easily as if it unless you are like Picasso the, you're, I mean if you are Picasso you can do whatever you like <laughs> I think um, but but then again of course we, we should all another aspect of this is we, we should always do what we we like the most so so of course, I understand that some people don't like designing the balloons, perhaps, or they don't like drawing the panel frame, and, and they they want to just do it in Photoshop simply and like, like that, and it's done. But but I like the manual feeling of uh, using ink on paper. I mean, that, that, that's my thing. So I'm doing it. So I'm doing all these panel frames, which could be done much more speedily in, in Photoshop. I mean, I could save, I don't know, an hour a day. <laughs> so I don't have to edit my my, um, so my panel frame so much. But, but uh, I don't because I like I like drawing with a fountain pen. I like pen and paper. I like editing in Photoshop. I like so many things. I mean, it's it's just like a paradise for me. So I don't mind, and I I I really want this this sort of old style, old school uh, end result in my printed color comic. So so I'm. Trying, I'm trying to achieve that, but I still want to improve on the masters. So I'm, I still want to find my style, and I still want to uh, appreciate very much what Tintin and Asterix and all these guys have shown us. They they've shown us some kind of grammar for how to do comics, but and then we can refine it, and we can extend it, and we can change it a little bit and we can sort of uh, fine adjust all these things and and uh, uh, so that we we are uh, can can find find our expression our style our um, way of life so to speak okay so that's that so we're now we've so we've done all these things um, and we are now uh, pretty much complete. We we could talk about the lettering also, but no, but I, I think we we should stop here, and we should um, perhaps we should look at one example of. Let's see if I have something suitable here somewhere. Now where am I? We have UD11 here. I think I, I used this in a video just recently. We can just... Oh yeah, we have a finished panel here. Okay. Alright, so we've taken an example here. We have Barry Riley and they are in trouble on the spaceship. 
but unless something else happens, we should be fine, right? <laughs> so it's a little bit of foreshadowing here, and okay, we have we are pretty good in oh the panel width is perfect. <laughs> it's just uh, okay, so so this is cool. Oh, it is exact. I mean, I didn't. Oh, it's just a bonus here that we got the same panel height. So here is what I actually am doing. This is the exact. Um, this distance here in my panel is what I actually am doing. So it's actually more than I showed here in this Tintin sketch. But this is the distance I, I decided upon. And here I also, you can see my tails are bigger, longer. And another aspect of the design here that uh, wasn't, isn't really a, a, about the lettering per se, but but it is about distances because because in Tintin um, there is there is not really enough white space around the text. So I have taken a the um, I, I took the dis decision to increase. So, so what I'm talking about is. Okay, let's have to create a layer. Let's do that. Um, so, what I'm talking about is simply. Simply this distance here, here, so all around here, there should be white, I think. This is my uh, s sort of trademark, that there should be like a frame of white surrounding the text, so that it's, it's, um, it feels not cramped but nicely arranged and this of course has to do with the space between the lines and this uh, so the whole this must be designed by someone who who knows a little bit about typo typo typography right at least okay so that's basically it and now i'm just reminding everyone here about the the um, fantastic story that I'm doing, the uh, 987 degrees centigrade, and this will be available in some time. Hoping you're having had a good time, and um, until next time, bye bye.